Hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel little ravings In today's video let's have a look into the essay the sense of the past written by Lionel Mordecai Trilling Before getting into the essay let's have a look into the author introduction This is the picture of Lionel Mordecai Trilling Lionel Mordecai Trilling was born in 1905. He was educated in New York and he taught at Columbia University for several years. He had impressed the readers over the world with his versatility as a literary critic. He had been widely acclaimed for his critical studies on Matthew Arnold and E.M. Foster. He died in the year 1975. Trilling's critical achievement is to be found in his essays collected under the following titles: The Liberal Imagination, The Opposing Self, A Gathering of Fugitives, and Beyond Culture. Now, let us move on into our today's topic, the sense of the past. The sense of the past remains one of the most perceptive responses to T. S. Eliot's essay, "The Tradition and Individual Talent." In this essay, Trilling offers not merely a critique of certain shortcomings in the new critical account of literary work of art, but he also refines the conception of literature propounded by T. S. Eliot. Trilling begins the essay with an observation. that in recent years the study of literature is questioned again and again based on the ground that what is studied is not so much as literature itself but the history of literature john j chapman was perhaps the first to denounce this archaeological quasi scientific and documentary study of fine arts Trilling says that the world seems to be less and less responsive to literature. He also says that criticism made its attack on historians of literature in the name of literature as power. In an age of science, the methods of science should be used. One of the most notable methods of science is the investigation of genesis of how a work of art came into being. Trilling is never concerned to show that the study of Genesis is harmful to the right experience of the work of art. Aristotle tells that every study has its own degree of certainty and that the well-trained man accepts that degree and does not look for a greater one. The great mistake of the scientific historical scholarship is that it looks for a degree and a kind of certainty that literature does not need and cannot allow. Trilling then says that there exists a terminal point for everything. We should recognize the terminal point and try not to push beyond that terminal point. It is not applicable in the case of literary work and literature. Literature is a historical art in three separate senses. Number 1, in olden days the poet himself was supposed to be a historian, a reliable chronicler of events. According to him, a large part of literature is properly historical, the recording and interpreting of personal, national and cosmological events. Number 2, every literary work is a part of tradition. This is well explained by T. S. Eliot in his well-known essay Tradition and Individual Talent. The pastness and the historicity of a work of art is a factor of great importance. Number 3. One cannot understand a work unless he understands the period in which the writer of the particular work lived. If not, it will be like the family of Patridge who went to watch Hamlet. In the pastness of these works lies the assurance of their validity and relevance. The basic fact is that Trilling supports literary historians. The new critics are only bothered about the present and they try to make things more complicated. The origin of poetry are buried in obscurity and its effective significance depend on the existence of other poems. A poem cannot be written in cultural vacuum. 
Trilling likes to suggest a few ways in which literary scholars can give to us the notion of history. The basic human nature is always the same. There is an essential difference between convention and life. Life is always expressed through convention and convention has meaning only because of the intentions of life. Trilling then says that there is no expressed meaning but assumed meaning. He also says that one should not be suspicious of literature. One must not compare literature with other branches and doubt the quality of literature. He also says that the poet is both the product and the cause of the environment. The poet may be used as a barometer but let us not forget that he is also the part of the weather. According to Trilling, ideas are the product of some situation. Some are the modification of existing ideas, but the number of situations are less. According to Nietzsche, the coldness to historical sense is because of the trouble we faced in the 19th century. Marx too contributes to this. In short, the knowledge or the sense of the past must give a person the capacity to evaluate things between good and bad and also develop a divining instinct. Trilling says that for Nietzsche, both historical sense and the sense of art are never two but one. He concludes the essay telling that culture should be studied and judged as a continuous process. We should not expect it in cultural things. Thus, we come to the end of the essay. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you. Meet you soon in another video. Bye.